this is not an album analysis in the traditional sense. See, I don't really like doing reviews. I have written some and even planned on doing quickie reviews, but I just don't like doing them. It's not easy for me to break down the qualities of what works and what doesn't. I think a lot of the times when I listen to something I don't really have a way of breaking it down. I do have my own numerical opinions of albums sometimes, but I usually just do that for fun. Whenever I try to be all serious and mighty high about it, I just feel wrong. And you might think, well, your previous videos don't sound like that, and that is true. That was ultimately why I don't really do them, because it's not that fun. Even in my Greta video, for as negative as it is, it's not as much of a review of the album and more the phenomena of Greta Van Fleet. Also, negative videos are harder to make, I find. Not that positive ones are easier, but they're less strenuous. Hence why I call them analysis, to fuel my pretentious heart. <coughs> that said, I don't think my normal summary analysis approach works here. Patricia Taxon is an experimental pop artist who has made soundtracks for H Bomber Guy, I guess, and a YouTuber. Her albums are generally odd and weird, while interesting and packed with effort. Her hyperpop and noise pop experiments are more on the inaccessible side. Even me, a person who likes weirder artists, is put off by her openness to. well. Let me set the scene real quick. You have it all here, little demigod. The awesome is your cream cholesterol riddled suit upon your claws. We get the I'm not averse to music by furries. I listened to a few in 2023 because the normal music sucks. To deal with the elephant in the room. Wait, what the fuck? Taxon is an open furry. And that matters because that's what the album's about. Well, we'll get to that. Last year, she had a seven album anthology super album, Tech Dog, which I tried to listen to, but I didn't really click with it. It was more electronic than pop, and even then, it reminded me more of the Flowers of St. Francis more than it. I heard a few people in the grapevine liked it. Either way, it wasn't my sip of soup. Bicycle should have pushed me away, if anything. I mean, look at it. It's an anthropomorphic dog riding a bike in the wind. Dreams of wind rushing through my fur. On a bike? Have you ever ridden a bike in the wind? I can't tell whether I like or dislike this album cover. It has Midwestern energy and also indie MySpace core energy. Why are they radiating fumes? Are they in the wind or in the nuclear blast? Sorry, I'll stop. Why did I listen to it? Because I can. Why am I doing this video? Because I can. Mainly it was because of the compositions of the album. The strange, gentle, and dreamlike ambience the album has. I'll say this, Bicycle was relaxing. It was not fun and not at all what I expected. It also has been stuck in my head for the entire month. Especially those goddamn pads right before the fast-paced chorus and big wheel. It sounds like the invisible music that plays when you ride down a hill on a bike, I'm not kidding. And it was that which drove me to make this video. I know a lot of people won't like this album for reasons I really can't be bothered to get into. I, I get it, but I don't care. Even then, I mean, I reviewed Anarchists. My standards aren't high. Mostly, I want to have fun. That Blur video was hard, man. I had to re-edit it, like, twice. Most of the songs are experiments of retro electro music, which sound heavily like the DS. When the songs hit, they hit. Boys, Frat Claws, and Chip Shop all sound like tracks you'd hear in an LPS Pet Shop or Zuzu Pet DS games. Add My Sims Kingdom to that list, why not? Fuck it, add the whole lineup. Chip Shop is certainly a break in the faster and race-like tracks, being calm and kinda lo-fi. While Boys and Frat Claws almost sound like fire tools. I Do and Furry are both circular tracks to end and begin the album with a sharp heartbeat like drum beat and repetitive since delaying in and out. As the distorted vocal chorus, while calm at the start, turns more energetic and angelic in its closer. And those electrical beeps in the song, kind of like an alarm clock going off in your dream, is quite a cool touch. Reminds me of the car beeps in Where Are You? They seem to be about the narrator in their lament regarding the figure who they ride with in their dreams, clinging on to the joy while on the verge of waking from their paradise, which seems to be the main story of the album. I don't think it is necessarily narrative, but it has a vague line through it. 
Speaking of narrative, Cavalry is one of two songs with lyrics. Cavalry is a fierce drum and bass song with lyrics spoken like micropop. Two demons canter with their wives. Those beautiful eyes. The electronics mix in with quick hats and fast moving pads, which sound kind of like a casino machine. It also includes that same fast pace, which creates that spirit of movement. Am I making any sense here? In terms of the verses repeated in the song, do demons canter with their wives? Do demons ballet by these rainy skies? Will water crash beneath the sea? Will water fall upon the cavalry? I don't know. I almost went into the usual analytical mode I normally go into. However, it took me a moment to realize that demons probably isn't literal. I mean, demons can have their fun, why not? Not like biblical demons and hell-breathing monsters. In fact, it probably refers to people, with water referring to, at first, the ocean, while later into a force which attacks those who fight against the demons and heathens. I think the chorus itself, especially in the song title, is mostly about whether these soldiers and idealized figures are as invincible and heroic as they're written as. There's also the question of how they'll be stopped in their tracks. <laughs> Lay by these rainy skies, the water fall upon the cavalry. After all, if demons are dancing in the rain, are the cavalry stopped in their tracks by demonic fire? These are the questions that need answers. Or Brotherhood and Big Wheel, my personal favorite songs, are a two-parter, 15 minutes, of some of the best goddamn electro ambient I've ever heard in my life. The opening alone of Brotherhood is absolutely gorgeous. Paired with the subtle drums and the beat, it allows this beautiful warm synth to take up the scene and it succeeds. It actually kind of sounds like a sunset. Even with the subtle electric tracks playing next to it, and the clock ticking which clacks alongside it, still the main ambient instrument flows like a wave before the main chorus comes in. Paired with the muted waves flowing in, it sounds like a bright sunny summer day in the morning next to a lake with nobody around. It builds up into big wheel next slowly. I, I can't believe I'm making this fucking comparison. Like Wings of Marie transitions into 10,000 days. All the zero tool stands of my 11 subscribers are going to not kill me because they aren't watching this. While Big Wheel has these low pitch vocals that are a bit jarring, when the main song begins and the main singing begins, it actually sounds fairly right. While the song begins its long build up into the chorus. The writing, if a bit cheesy at times, is mostly about two people riding their bikes through the wind by a busy road towards a light path to the north. The light path to the north, red and white leviathan, her scales a glistening shore. I thought of a lighthouse, but the imagination turns this massive, large, glowing beacon into a sort of eldritch dragon of sorts. The verses being in such awe of this image, trying to hold on as this grand dream seems too magnificent to be real. It's getting hard to breathe, so take my palm and dive. It could also be purely fictional and fantastical. Perhaps this dragon is a literal dragon. After all, this album is textually a furry fantasy. And it could be analogous to freedom from societal pressures to be more normal. To live freely in a fantasy with no rules and expectations. The chorus ends with The big wheel in the sky He arcs o'er miles and miles The sun itself. It's ultimately the grand dream of joy as the main song begins with the grand chorus of speed, light, and wind. Will you remember me when you're back in your It's mostly the memory of great times, even at the expense of it being only a moment, only a dream. Light being the beauty which creates, which takes away the dream. It sounds wonderful. Part of me is reluctant to completely praise this album. It might be that I worry I might be overselling it. It's not brilliant, and it's certainly not going to be my album of the year. And there's the furry thing. The only reason it didn't come to my analysis is I imagine the memories of riding my bike with my brother when we were kids. Riding across the city, hating how fucking shitty it was. Oh, I miss that. I'm not a furry at all, and I only knew a couple by proxy. My avatar is a spider because if I showed my face, I would have to go into hiding. Spiders also have hair, so technically I'm hairy. 
even through all of that. Do you want to know why I love this album? Because it was really good. It was interesting. It made me think. I'm bringing this corpse of a horse back. 2023, baby. That year still sucks. I think I've found two albums from that year since December that I genuinely wish I didn't miss. Dog's Body and Nemesta. I never did the worst list because each entry would have just been <coughs> It was boring. <coughs> it was boring. <coughs> it was boring. Ad nauseum. Starting off 2024 with actually good albums is such a relief. I'm being dramatic, sure, but even that lukewarm Green Day album was miles better than half the albums that were major releases last year. Bicycle generally made me feel something new. You know, I don't normally like nostalgia and memories and thinking back, I actually tend to hate those feelings, but this album actually packaged them in a new and interesting way that wasn't just rely on how the past was better. It's about dreaming. Brant aside, I really liked Bicycle. It's a pretty dream-inspired and nostalgic album about the joys of traveling down a hill on a bicycle. Despite my goofing around, I get the enjoyment of it. Ultimately, it left me with memories of me and my brother to think about when we rode through the rain as a rainbow appeared in the clouds. It's a remarkably creative album about the joys of summer and freedom. To me.